Thank you very much for joining our first virtual Mocha Cooks Dumpling Making Party with Chef Kian Lam Ko, author of the award-winning cookbook Phoenix Clouds and Jade Trees, Essential Techniques of Authentic Chinese Cooking. This class covers all the steps you need to make dumplings at home, including hand folding techniques and how to achieve that perfect pan sear. Kim will discuss his favorite dumpling recipes and share some tips and tricks so you can enjoy your dumplings almost instantly. Mocha President Nancy Yamasbeck will facilitate the class and help answer questions as we have a record breaking number of nearly 500 registered participants. If you are interested in purchasing a copy of his cookbook, we highly encourage you to place an order on the online store to support this family-owned small business in New York City Chinatown since 1991 because they had to temporarily close three stores, including the mocha shop. The mocha team would also like to share that we deeply miss our community and hope that your and yours are safe and well. Mocha has not skipped a bit since its temporary closure in March. We have been converting our programs to online offerings and creating new digital contents through multiple platforms, always free of charge because history matters. During this Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, we invite you to experience the best of our museum content through digital tours and audio guides, oral history archive, collections online, digital lenses such as our new Mocha Heroes magazines, My Mocha Stories, social media video series, public webcast and listen with Mocha. That being said, we have been hit hard by the dramatic loss of income due to COVID-19. If you enjoy this public program, we hope you will consider making a gift to become part of a continuing lifeline for Mocha. No amount is too little and we greatly appreciate your generosity. Your support will ensure the survival of Mocha, which has been dealt with many blows over the past months. There are many ways to contribute, including becoming a museum member or making a fully tax deductible donation to help bring you a small sense of relief. A new Mocha membership will be extended for another six months. That's 18 months in total for a one-year membership. All current members will be automatically extended for another six months. Lastly, if you haven't completed the census, please take a few minutes to fill out the questionnaire. Census determines whether communities will receive critical federal and state funding for education, healthcare, infrastructure, and more for the next 10 years. It will specifically impact MOCA's institutional support from federal and state agencies. Without further ado, I will let our President Nancy introduce our guest, Kim. Thank you. Thanks, thanks so much, Neil. And thanks to the 260 of you who are going to be eating dumplings for dinner. Yes. And uh, we were so excited for our first uh, virtual cook-in, and we could not think of anyone better to do this than Chef Kian uh, Cam Lo, Lam, I'm sorry, Kian Lam Ko. I'm sorry, I'm already hungry, see? This is getting me very uh, throw, salivating at the thought of dumplings. Um, but um, Chef Kian, also lovingly known as The Red Cook, he has a blog online that you can check out that he started in 2008. Um, but Chef Kian is a very good friend to the museum. And he has one of the most fascinating backgrounds to how he got to where he is today. And of course, it's on the natural path of being first for 20 years an aerospace engineer and developing software on Wall Street. Um, Kian took that um, vast uh, intellectual capacity and decided to put it to work as a uh, cook and a chef um, and exhibiting his passion in that way. He started off apprenticing in the kitchen of Chef Jeff, uh, Josh Capon at Canteen, which is now Lira Fisher, Fish Bar, um, in the Soho area, and continued to develop and share his gifts uh, for uh, cooking on his blog. He was also, he's modest about this, but I do want to share that uh, Kian was selected as a finalist and nominated for the James Beard Foundation Award in 2011. And he continues to teach uh, cooking to eager uh, learners and students in a variety of different places. Um, and today we get to open this up with him in honor of Asian Pacific Heritage Month. And also just an acknowledgement of so many of the restaurants we love are having such difficulties today. Um, so I wanna encourage everyone to try to support in whatever way via takeout, um, via donations. Um, think about your local favorite restaurants, check in on them, go to their websites and see what you can do to help them out because we all want to make sure that they are back 
in full force. Um, and I know that, in, especially in New York City, where rent and property taxes are coming up, there's a lot of pressure on those institutions. So I encourage you all to look for your favorites and support them in any way possible. Kian, yes. are, we, are we ready to cook dumplings? Yes, we are. Yeah, and, and for those of you, we see the chat and the questions. Um, add your questions there. Neil's going to help answer the ones um, as quickly as possible, and then we'll continue to ask questions along the way as we see them pop up in case it's on a certain step. Um, but we're ready to go. We're going to go from start to finish until that dumpling goes into your mouth. Okay, Kian. Well, thank you for the introduction, Nancy. That was really great, and I'm, I'm really honored to be here and um, sharing uh, how to make dumplings here at MoCA's uh, live stream. Um, welcome, and I'm welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> um, and yes, uh, you know this is going to be a very interesting uh, uh, afternoon for everybody. I think I'm going to actually uh, show you guys a few things uh, that uh, that you can make dumpling uh, with. Uh, we're going to use two kinds of doughs. Uh, one is commercially purchased, and another one is actually you're going to make it here. Um, uh, uh, at home. So there you go. Nancy, Nancy has already made her dough. Yay. <laughs> so, um, and also, you know, I want you to also understand that the filling for, for many of these Chinese dumplings are, uh, you know, very varied. You can basically put all sorts of combinations to go with it. Um, of course, the most iconic ones are pork with uh, garlic chives and also pork with cabbage, those are two of the most iconic ones that, that you find all over, um, you know, in restaurants and even in, in people's homes. So now, uh, uh, but, but you can do all sorts of meat. You can put in uh, beef, lamb, fish, shrimp. There are all these other, uh, you know, possibilities that you can uh, uh, put to use uh, depending on where you live and what kind of ingredients that you have. Now, the, the key is that most often what we do is we would combine one meat, one protein, and one vegetables. Um, and with those two, we add to it some aromatics uh, and seasoning, and then uh, sesame oil. Sesame oil is what really gives it that extra flavor, that extra kick in the, in the flavor um, for the dumplings. Now. Uh, if you're a vegetarian, uh, you can also put together all sorts of different vegetarian uh, ingredients. Um, you know, you can put in tofu, you chop it up into small pieces and uh, uh, combine it with some carrots, some um, uh, garlic chives, you can buy them, some, uh, you know, spinach. Uh, so these are all sorts of wonderful uh, ingredients that you can put together. And the, the, the main key is that you uh, add some aromatics to it and sesame oil and of course season it with salt and pepper. So that's basically um, you know, the basic uh, uh, method of, of putting together uh, a dumpling. Now I'm going to talk about two different kinds of filling, uh, uh, wrap, uh, dough to wrap. One is that you can actually go out and buy uh, from a, uh, a market or Chinese market and it looks like this, they're round. I think uh, I'm showing it in another camera that has my uh, board, uh, the train on the board, so you you can see it here. If you if you click on that uh, window, you should be able to see uh, my the board and the hands. Okay, so uh, this is a, a a round dumpling wrapper that's basically just flour and water. The same thing as we would do at home, just flour and water. But it's already done, and you know, although uh, the texture is going to be a little bit different, but it is acceptable. You can actually just, if you you know, don't have the time to do it, to make your own dough. This is an excellent way of of um, substituting it, and we'll talk about that later. Now, the next one that I'm going to, uh, to show you is actually making your own dough. Okay, now uh, it's really very simple. It's just water and uh, flour and water. That's all there is. You know, the key though is that you have to use hot water. Now, in fact, you use boiling water to get start, started. You pour some hot boiling water into, into the flour dough, um, and that boiling water actually cooks some of the uh, protein in the flour, so that makes it less elastic, because the gluten is already cooked, so when you knead the dough, it's not gonna be as elastic as, like, say, a, um, um, 
uh, bread. So, you know, uh, one of the advantage to that, one of the advantages to the fact that it's not too elastic is when you roll the dough, it would not stretch too far. And because otherwise, it, you know, if you roll it um, to a, a large piece and then it will shrink back down to a smaller piece. That's, we're trying to prevent that. We're trying to make sure that it doesn't, becomes too elastic and yet still has that chewy texture. And that, that's the key to uh, making this um, homemade dough. Now, um, uh, all, all sorts of flours from, from different locations has, has, uh, has very different uh, moisture content. So in other words, it, uh, the water with, that you put into the flour uh, may not be the exact amount because even though my recipe calls for up, uh, about one cup of water total, uh, you may want to adjust that because your own flour may be a little bit different because the moisture content is not the same. So what I would recommend, which is what in the recipe, is that you add three-quarter cup of the water first, which is boiling water, mix it up, and then just add a little bit, maybe like two tablespoons at a time, um, and knead the dough until it gets the right texture. Now, what is the right texture? This is the difficult part, right? Um, I, I wish I can, I wish we, we have a technology that you can actually touch my dough. <laughs> but uh, what is important is that you want to make sure that the dough itself is soft and uh, smooth and, and but not elastic and not sticky. It's not, uh, you know, the, the end product, the end product of the dough is not sticky. Even though at the beginning when you start, it would be a little bit sticky before you knead it, but at the end, the dough itself is not sticky. It's smooth and, and, and sort of almost like, uh, you know, if you just touch your cheek, it should be soft and not, not like a tough piece of a lump of dough. So that's how you would um, try to de determine uh, the texture. So I am going to actually show you how to actually uh, make the dough right now. Okay, I'm going to move the uh, chopping board and bring the flour over. Okay, here's the flour. There's already two cups that I've already measured from before. And hey, so- hey, John, we have a question. Can we use wheat flour? And where is that beautiful uh, board coming from? Right. Now, um, if we use whole wheat flour, uh, you will, you know, you will have to combine it with regular flour because otherwise, there won't, you're not going to get that gluten. The gluten is the is is the um, you're not going to get enough gluten, in other words, because all whole wheat flour has less gluten in it, and and uh, so you you need to combine. I would say maybe half and half, half regular all-purpose flour and half uh, wheat flour. Uh, the reason is because you want to uh, add enough gluten in the dough so that it will be chewy and when you, you know, fi finally cook it. Otherwise, it, it would be kind of tough. It would be more like a, uh, uh, a tough dough that that's not ha doesn't have that chewiness to it when it's cooked. Yeah, and then sometimes you see green dough, like in the spinach uh, dumplings. Yeah. How do you get the green color in there? Well, that basically is just using um, spinach uh, juice instead of, instead of the regular water. So what you would do is, I mean, I, what I would do is um, I would still use hot water at the beginning to uh, mix the dough and then add about, you know, one quarter cup of the spinach juice that you, you puree. Spinach, what you do, you, um, you just puree it in a, uh, in a uh, food processor and then uh, drain the, the liquid out. Um, and there will, I, you, I don't think you need to put in... Uh, extra water into it when you when you when you puree it because um it's it's spinach is pretty um uh, watery that you know it, the leaves themselves so i would say that you can just go ahead and puree the, the um spinach and then squeeze out the juice and you only need about you know one quarter cup or uh, even less than that to, to to make the dough really green now the thing about um uh, spinach uh dough like that when you cook, you don't want to overcook it either because when, once you overcook, the color turns into this ugly um, brownish green color. So that's uh, one of the things that you have to be careful with. Don't overcook it. Okay, I'm going to get um, some hot water right now.
And if we made the dough last night and then we taking it out of the refrigerator now, but it's a little cold, should we worry about that or should we just knead it? What can we do to warm it up a bit? Um, you can actually knead it a little bit um, and just, you know, take it out a little bit uh, earlier so that, that it'll um, warm up to room temperature. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it would be fine. Uh, so here, here's the hot boiling water that I have, and I'm just going to pour it in and use a chopstick or a wooden spoon to mix it up because you don't want to burn your hands. Um, but initially, this is what you do. Some people may be seeing you use chopsticks with this and it seems like it's very unnatural, but why would you use chopsticks? Just that I'm used to using it. <laughs> you can use you can use um, um, pretty much anything. Uh, you can use a, a wooden spoon. I mean, or any any kind of a large spoon that could uh, mix well. So um, it it doesn't. You don't have to use chopstick. I mean, I'm just used to using it. Um, so actually, it's it's now relatively cool. Well, it's still warm, but not. I can I can handle it already. So so I'm going to just go ahead and use my hands now. Um, I'm also going to uh, keep some cold water handy and this way I'm going to just pour a little bit just to cool down the, the dough as well and now I you start mixing it. Actually as you mix it, it will become kind of moist but um, and a bit sticky but don't worry about it because when you when you uh, knead it, it will it will dry up and becomes this nice and smooth uh, texture. Okay. Now, on the other, and the other thing is that um, it is actually better to air on the um, moist side for the dough than to have a very dry dough because it's almost impossible to try to incorporate more liquid to a dry dough. But um, but if you have a, a relatively moist dough and, and it's a bit too wet, it's easier to incorporate extra flour to it. So that's, that's a little tip that I would say, you know, if you, if you um, find yourself in that situation. Um, so, no. It's pretty sticky. So, you know, there's been lack of flour. As we know, there's a little rationing of flour. Can we use any other type of uh, ingredient like tapioca flour? We, we heard that in Mississippi, the Chinese were using tapioca flour a bit, or someone has coconut, almond. Anything else we can use instead of white? Um, I don't think it would work. The only reason that I say that is because one of the things that um, texture that you have in, a, uh, in the Chinese dumpling is that slightly chewiness, which really is generated by the gluten as opposed to um, um, uh, starch. And if you use all the other type of flour, there's too much starch in it and there's no gluten. And the gluten is what creates that, that, that um, uh, texture, the flavor. I have to say that this is a little bit too wet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get a little extra flour. So this is what I'm, I meant. If it's, um, you know, I would rather that you have a wet dough that you can then incorporate some extra dry flour to, uh, to make it work. And if we forgot to use boiling water for three fourths of the cup and we accidentally use cold water, do we need to start over? <laughs> um, no, but, <clears throat> but what you will end up having is this dough that's more difficult to work with. I mean, it's, it, it is possible to work with, with, with um, cold water dough, but um, it's just not going to uh, uh, be, you know, pliable enough for you to, to, to form the, um, the, 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 the shape properly. Okay. Actually, this is almost getting to the texture that I really like, which is just soft enough, but, um, but not too moist and it has a, a nice uh, smooth surface and you're gonna let it rest the, and the more you let it rest the more the gluten will develop even though you've already cooked um, a little bit of the um, of the gluten um, but there's still enough that it will it will create this nice smooth texture on the uh, on the 
on the dough. So there you go. This is, this is what you want to see. And you want to be able to press and it sort of has a little bit of elasticity, but not too tough and, and, and not soft that, and it's not sticky, right? So as you see, this is not sticky now. And do you think, is it the chopstick by hand method better than using like a food processor for the dough? Um, no, I think food processor is fine. Um, the only thing that uh, with a food processor, um, you have to know to adjust the, the, liquid, the water. As you, you know, so again, if you're using a food processor, uh, start with what, three quarter of the water and then a uh, three quarter cup that is, um, and then slowly add the water until the dough form into a ball in the food processor itself. You, yes, you can do that. That, that, that would be fine. Okay, so I'm going, to, I'm going to let this rest. In fact, you really should uh, be sure to make your dough ahead and let it rest, okay? Because that, the, the gluten will develop uh, into this structure that's, that's slightly elastic, um, and that is what gives the chewiness to um, the, the dough itself. So there you go. We uh, are Jeff Pian, can you put that? can you put the dough right up to the camera so everyone can get a good look at it? Everyone see? It looks like a it looks like a bun. Can you see that? Huh? It looks like a oh, like a a bowzer, a bun. Right. <laughs> Almost like a bowzer. <laughs> All right. So now um, uh, we we should really wrap this up so that it doesn't dry up too much. Okay. Um, what? Can you wrap this up? So. I am how, having, long, how long do you rest it for? I would say 20, 20, 20 to 30 minutes, that's, uh, which is just enough time um, for you to um, you know, uh, put together the, the filling. And so that's what I would, that is what I would do. Now, one of the things about dumpling in Chinese culture is that it is a very communal um, uh, type of uh, the meal and, and you wanna be able to do this with your whole family. Um, I, I always see, this family scene that the that which is really kind of interesting is always that the father would uh, would um, make the dough and roll it out, and the mother would make the filling, and then the whole family will get together after that to um, to wrap the dough uh, the dumplings, and that is such an an amazing uh, <laughs> a sight I think for a family communal cooking. So I. I guess I would encourage you to make this while, while you're being uh, sheltering in place um, and have the whole family make the dumpling together. All right. So now let's talk about the um, filling, right? Um, whoa, 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 sorry. <laughs> All right. Now. With the filling, we are going to uh, use, for me, I was actually able to find uh, garlic chai from H Mart in the Upper West Side. Uh, I, I live in Harlem and, and uh, there's an H Mart in Upper West Side. I was able to go to walk down there actually <laughs> to uh, purchase uh, this garlic chai. And so I am actually going to make this classic pork and garlic chai dumpling. Okay, now, um, the pork is regular ground pork that's about, it's about half, uh, half a pound, eight ounces. And I am also going to use the garlic chive. Now, you'll see that this is a lot of garlic chives, but don't be scared because it's, it'll, it will all be um, wilted and mixing with the, with the pork. So, um, I want you to understand that the, the, the garlic chive in Chinese cooking um, we're, we consider it as being a vegetable rather than a, uh, an, uh, you know, an herb. And this is why uh, we use a lot as a vegetable to mix in with the pork itself. Okay, now, and it's, uh, I've, I've washed and cleaned this and basically we're going to just chop it up into tiny pieces. I think many of us are wondering where we can pick up one of those cleavers. <laughs> I actually bought it in Chinatown. There's a lot of um, restaurant supply stores in Chinatown, especially on the Bowery's. Um, there are a few of them. Um, and you can just go in there and ask for um, help in terms of 
getting um, cleaver now. You know, there are many different kinds of cleaver. The, the one that I have is the medium weight. Um, I sort of use this medium weight as my uh, all-purpose cleaver that I use for either um, cutting meat uh, and sometimes hacking into chicken bones um, and also cutting vegetables. But they also have a, a much heavier weight one, which basically uh, is for hacking bones. So if you have like um, large pieces of bone that you wanted to, to uh, cut up, you will need a very heavy uh, cleaver. This one will not do because it will it will basically just ruin the, the knife edge. And then how there's another. How much, how much would one of those cost, Kian? And I know I've had this for more than 25, 30 years now. Um, I, I believe when I bought it, it was only like about, it's under $20. It was like $18, $19. But now if you buy, I would say maybe around $30. So that's, uh, and they're, they're really um, very durable. And I, I've used one for, for, like I said, almost 30 years. So, you know. Go out and get one. <laughs> now I was going to say, um, and then there's the lightweight one, which is, is which is basically very commonly just used as a um, as a uh, uh, knife for for garnishing, uh, uh, slight uh, cuts, or also for cutting vegetables. Uh, but that's a very lightweight one, and you don't want to use that to to hack into any kind of a bone. Um, this one I like it because it's 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 all purpose, and I can I can cut chicken bones with this. Not not pork or beef bones, but at least, um, you know, chicken, duck, I can use this to, to cut up the, the uh, poultry. Okay, so now, um, with, with this meat, I'm actually also going to add some uh, aromatics. So uh, aromatics, as far as the, uh, for pork is concerned, I'm going to use garlic and scallion. Okay, now, um, Again, this for 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 um, for pork. I generally don't use ginger. Um, somehow, uh, I find that ginger is a bit too harsh for pork flavoring. But for uh, lamb or or beef um, or fish uh, or shrimp, and then I would also include a little bit of ginger. But otherwise, I wouldn't. Uh, with pork, I wouldn't. Um, and. As far as using the scallion is concerned, I also like to use the white of the scallion rather than uh, the green. The green of the scallion, I'll, I generally use it as a, for, for garnishing. I use it as a garnish. So here I have about, I would say maybe one tablespoon of scallion that I'm gonna put in. And also a little bit of garlic. And then to this, I'm going to add some salt, okay? Again, the salt really is to your taste. I would, I would, I personally would probably put about half a teaspoon of salt. Um, and also remember not to make it too uh, salty because in the end, you're also going to be dipping the, the dumpling in a sauce um, and you don't want it to be too salty. And a little bit of white pepper. Now, uh, in Chinese cooking, we generally use white pepper as, as for seasoning. Um, uh, we don't really use black pepper. Uh, black pepper, very often we only use it as a spice and not as a seasoning uh, agent, okay? And finally, you put a little bit of sesame oil, okay? And Kian, I, I think some of us noticed that you seemed very apologetic when you said you don't use ginger. Do you feel like most people use ginger? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you say apologetic? Of, yes, a lot of recipe actually does uh, call for ginger. Um, I mean, I'm not a big fan of pork with ginger. So, um, um, and in fact, um, very, you know, in, in professional cooking, um, most recipes don't call for ginger when, it, when, you're, when they're making um, lean pork. And, and I, uh, but, but look, a lot of recipes actually call for ginger. And if you like ginger, um, go ahead and put it in. You know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna ruin your, your filling per se. <laughs> and I have okay. another really good question about the ground pork. A lot of people cannot find ground pork. You know, you can find it in all the Chinese uh, supermarkets, but um, I remember the day my mom found it at the local stop and shop and she was so happy 
So what do you recommend for people when um, they can't get ground pork? Should they, should they buy a pork chop and then sort of dice it or grind it? Yes, check it, uh, chop it up yourself. <laughs> no, yes, I would, I would say, um, you know, it's really not, it's not difficult to chop um, um, uh, pork. Buy um, the pork that has a little bit of fat, like maybe stew pork would, would do really well if you, can, if you are able to get uh, stew pork or if you, if you can get a pork shoulder um, that has a little bit of fat because you do want it to uh, um, have slight, uh, you know, uh, uh, fat into, in, in, your, in your filling. Um, so I would say buy that and then cut it up and chop it up. <laughs> or if you have a grinder, you know, one, uh, or if you have a, uh, uh, one of those attachments for your cuisine net or uh, uh, cuisine, cuisine, cuisine uh, kitchen aid, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, one of those attachments or kitchen aid and go ahead and use it, grind the meat up yourself. How does that smell? Would, Looks like it smells very really good. Um, and you can replace pork with ground um, turkey. That's also an excellent substitute for, um, for pork uh, if you want to make dumplings. So, uh, so yeah, buy, uh, I think ground turkey is easier to find in the supermarket than, than pork. So yes, go ahead and, and get, get them because uh, they, they would... Uh, they work really well. Okay, so as you see, the, the chive is beginning to wilt as you uh, as I mix it in, and so so it's really not so bad. But the result is when you make this into a filling, it becomes an incredibly um, uh, flavorful filling. So any, any other questions about the filling? Yeah, no, there are a lot of questions. Um, oh, actually, just backing up to the cleaver, how do you keep it sharp and how do you store it? I would use um, um, you know, stone to sharpen it. I use those uh, grinding stone that I, uh, I would sharpen the, the cleaver that way. It's, uh, it's the best way to uh, sharpen the, and you know, store it just like as if you would store a knife, make sure that it doesn't, um, um, you know, uh, uh, touch other metal um, metal equipment in your in your in your drawer. But if you you know, uh, otherwise it's just like storing knife. I know it's there is no uh, knife holder that could hold cleaver. <laughs> so so I would say um, put it in your drawer. Yeah. Um, and and I guess one way to prevent it from directly hitting metal is to put. Um, paper towel, you know, wrap this, wrap your cleaver with a paper towel um, that will, uh, that will keep it from directly contacting another, another metal items. Yeah. And okay. you make distinction between a spice versus a seasoning. Can you um, expand on that a bit? Okay. Seasonings is basically for, um, uh, to give the, the extra flavors like salt and pepper. Salt and pepper basically is just for seasoning to, you know, to give the salt, the savoriness to um, your dish. Now, a spice is to, to actually flavor the, the, the dish. For example, like, you know, you would use clove, you would use star anise, you would use um, cinnamon, um, or you, uh, cardamom, and, you know, these are the kind of spices that, that actually flavors the, the pr final product, final dish. Whereas salt and pepper is just to, to finish it, to give it a, the final um, a taste, the, savory, the savoriness of the, of the dish. Uh, and that's, that's where I think of it as being the difference. Seasoning and, and actually using a spice. Yeah. And then I think some questions about the meat, um, and the fat lean ratio. You know, sometimes you can get 80, 20, 90, 10. What do you recommend as far as uh, that ratio for ground turkey and for pork? Um, the ratio, like um, I, I said that, you know, we could do an equal amount of uh, weight of the protein versus the vegetables. Now, um, you know, one other thing that we need so much vegetable is to give the, enough texture to the filling because that way we can, um, 
we, not only we have the flavor, but we also have a little extra texture in, in, the, in the filling itself and not just a plain, uh, you know, boring, smooth uh, filling. So I would say half and half, uh, the same equal amount of weight, not, not in, in volume, but in weight. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that was one okay. pound of, uh, you used one pound of pork, right? I use half a pound of pork here. Half a pound, okay. And, and how many do you think that's going to make? Okay, I would say that this can, can make about 24 um, small uh, dumplings. Uh, well, again, it depends on the size of dumpling that you'd like to make. I generally like to make my dumpling a little bit smaller. Uh, I don't like it to be like these huge um, dumplings. Um, so I would say, um, you know, this probably can make about 24 dumplings with the, with the dough that we have. Yeah, and if you use instead of the garlic chives and you use cabbage, um, can you just go into the cabbage use a little bit? Do you have to boil it first? How, how small should you cut it? No, I, I would not boil cabbage. No, spinach, I would boil spinach um, because spinach is difficult to chop up when it's raw. So spinach, I would not boil, but, you know, just blanch. All that you do is with spinach is that you just take um, a, a little bit of hot boiling water, pour over it, and it will just immediately wilt, and then you drain it. Um, once it's drained, you can, you can start, uh, you know, cutting up and chopping up. And that way, uh, it, it's much easier to chop with the, um, with the, with the spinach. And actually, there's uh, a combination of filling that I love with spinach. It's, it's actually pork, shrimp, and spinach. That three combination is absolutely delicious. Um, so with that, I would say maybe you would use, um, you know, quarter pound of pork, quarter pound of shrimp, and, and half a pound of um, spinach or actually maybe one third one third one third because spinach uh, is once it's wilted it's a lot so so you may want to do one third one third so, but you know make the final product about one pound worth the final filling one pound worth but uh one third pound of the uh, uh pork one third pound of shrimp and again the shrimp you should also chop it up into uh, little pieces but not uh pureed you know you don't want you don't want to speaking of pureed um uh, you know, if you want to chop up vegetables, it, it, it is possible to use food processor to chop it up, but you just want to pulse it and pulse it to the point that it becomes, um, you know, like a, 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 the size of a grain of rice. You know, that way it has texture, but yet it's, it's, um, it's chopped up. Uh, you don't want to puree it because once you puree it, it just becomes liquid and, you, and then there's no texture anymore. And that's the key though, is like you want to have a little bit of texture while you um, uh, make the, 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 the fillings up. As, as you can see now, if you look at the, um, the board camera, the counter camera, uh, all, the, all that garlic chaff is now wilted and it's mixed into with the, with the pork and, and there's nothing there anymore. <laughs> okay? So, all right, now. The question is soy sauce. You said later that we're going to dip it in, but you don't add any soy sauce. Ah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, a lot of people actually do ask for soy, uh, to call for soy sauce in the recipes, um, which is actually good because soy sauce, you know, when you put soy sauce, you're actually adding MSG because uh, the naturally fermented soy is, creates uh, gluten, uh, glutamate. And, and so it really does give a little extra flavor. Now, the problem with it is that what I found in my, in my making of dumpling is that sometimes the brown color will sit into the uh, 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 you know, white flour f uh, dough and, and then it becomes, you know, it looks kind of unattractive because the, the, the dough sort of dis got discolored a little bit. Uh, but, you know, if you put a little bit of um, uh, soy sauce, just the regular soy sauce, not the dark soy, use, use the regular, um, you know, soy sauce that, that, that you, you uh, get from, for, for table uh, use. I would say if you put maybe a quarter teaspoon and not too much, because that, in, that basically just gives it a little, a little extra touch of, of um, savoriness to it. Yes, it is, you can do that. Yeah. I, I just don't like it because I don't want to discolor my the dough. <laughs> Any other questions? I think people are getting hungry and ready to go. Uh, we are actually um, really should go ahead and start wrapping, right? So I'm going to put this away.
What do you think about light soy sauce versus dark soy sauce? Is there really any difference? Is it a sodium count? No, um, the difference within, well, okay. When you say, when you say light soy sauce, um, I know we have this, this uh, difference in, in terms, in the uh, name of, of what a light soy sauce is. Well, there's the light soy sauce that soy sauce company actually uh, um, produced that has lower sodium. But then there's the regular soy sauce, which we, in Chinese, we actually call it light because the color is lighter. And then there's another kind of soy sauce that the color is slightly darker. Now, the difference is that the dark soy sauce is aged, whereas uh, regular soy sauce is not aged. Okay, and we, uh, the, the, the aged soy sauce um, usually has a much deeper flavor to it. Um, and we, we often use that as, the, as, as a coloring um, uh, uh, agent for, for making, uh, you know, Chinese stew. Uh, specifically, there's one particular Chinese technique called red cooking or red braising. Some people call it red braising. Um, uh, with that, you know, you, uh, uh, you want to use the, the dark soy, a little bit of dark soy to, to color the, the sauce. That way it's, it has this nice brown color. Okay, now, as you see this dough here, it's amazing. It's now transformed into this nice, really smooth um, dough. And that is what we want. we want. We want the dough to look like that. Now, I'm going to just put a little bit of flour on the board so that we can, we can uh, roll it out. Um, now, there are a couple ways of, of dividing this. Um, in Northern China, there is a very interesting way of creating a little donut. Okay, as you, as you create into donut, you pull and roll. Would you ever use minced water chestnuts? For some reason, I don't like those at all, but I know that some people do have a... Yes, uh, well, you know, um, in Cantonese cooking or dumplings, water chestnut is used a lot for, for the texture. Again, you know, that's one of the reasons that they, we would use that, is to give it, give it a nice texture. And uh, um, I would encourage you to use it, yes, if you, especially if you mix, uh, combine it with some seafood or, or, or if you're making vegetarian, um, you know, dishes, um, you know, that, that would work really well. Uh, but um, you know, it's not generally used for northern style dumplings, but I, I would say that go ahead, if you, if you like water chestnut, go ahead and use it. It's, it's, it gives extra texture. So here, this is the, um, the dough that, and, and if you cut it in half, then you have a nice long dough. Now, with this, I'm going to, I'm actually going to make about um, 24 uh, dumplings. So I'm going to first cut into the half. Oh, actually that's just, it's not, not quite <laughs> even. I'm going to just cut that off. Then you cut into another quarter. So we'll work on a quarter of this at a time. Before, uh, the other, I'm going to just set it aside and, uh, and try to... Uh, Roll the dough this way. Uh, if if, if um, everyone else is feeling like I am, you're going a little fast. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, no, just okay, we're, we're we're catching up now. I'm just stalling right now, so everyone can catch up. We're rolling the dough. I'm going a little fast because we are get, uh, running out of time. <laughs> uh, okay, so. So for each one of those, you, you can roll into a nice long strip. And you know, the, if, you are, if you are experienced enough, you can just, just you know, um, uh, pull little pieces of this dough out like that. But otherwise, you can just go ahead and use your knife and cut it into, into about, I would say, um, one inch length of that. So, so each one of that quarter, I have about 10 pieces, okay? 
So now you want to flower this properly. Uh, and for each one of these, you press it down um, into a, a disc. It's a bit small. Okay, so here are the initial um, form of the disc. So now we're going to roll this. Now, the way that we roll in Chinese uh, uh, dumpling rolling is that we use a very thin rolling pin like this. Um, you can buy this in Chinatown and get, again at the um, restaurant supply uh, stores. Um, but if you don't have um, this small, you can also use the regular uh, rolling pin. It's just that it's a little bit difficult. Now, uh, I'll show you how to roll it with a, roll, a regular rolling pin. But with this, what you do is you use your active hand. If you're right-handed, then use your right hand. I'm not right-handed, so I'm going to use my right hand. And I'm going to use this to, to roll the rolling pin. But then you use your passive hand, which for me is my left hand. I'm going to insert it into the rolling pin as, we, as I roll and, and pull it out. See? So as I roll, I pull the, the dough out. I know this is not the easiest way, uh, but you, if you practice it a little bit, then you get it. This is, make it as round as you can. So, uh, so you're doing a, uh, a rolling motion, and at the same time, you feed the round dough. Now, the idea with that is you wanna roll so that there's a bit thicker in the middle and thinner on the outside. The reason that you want to have it thinner on the outside is when you plead and, and seal the dough, uh, you know, you're, you're doubling the dough. So, so if it's thinner, then you won't end up with this really thick doughy seam at the top. And that's the key. So I'm, I'm going to make a few more, and then I'm going to show you how to uh, actually uh, fold, I mean, the, uh, the dumpling itself. Okay. There you go. So we've got four um, uh, doughs that's round, or relatively round, <laughs> and, and now we're gonna actually go uh, fill it. Now, I would say fill it, fill about, um, about one tablespoon of the, of the filling in. And since this dough is, is actually quite uh, moist, uh, you can just go ahead and plate it and, and, and seal it without, without putting any kind of moisture around it. So the first thing you do is just pinch one side first. Okay, can everybody see this? I, I, okay, I'm going to bring it up a little bit. Pinch on one end and then use your uh, other hand, the thumb and the index finger, and feed the, uh, the dough at the top. And this will naturally form a crescent-shaped dumpling. So, so that's, how, that's how you would um, fold the dough, that, the dumpling. So let me do it again. It's the dough, and then you make a pinch on one side, and then use your thumb and your index finger, just keep feeding one side. Okay, of the of the edge, and and that will eventually. It seems like Kian, you're kind of pulling on it because the dough is so elastic. Is that yeah. you shouldn't be afraid, right? You shouldn't be afraid because it, 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 it's not gonna it's not gonna break. So uh, I would go ahead and and just pull it a little bit. Yeah. So. All right, I'm gonna make four of this, and then we're gonna go ahead and use the commercial dough. Okay. Pinch on one end. Do you think the homemade dough, how much better does it taste in your opinion? Well, I think the homemade dough texture is, uh, is much better than the commercial one. So I generally uh, would use the, um, the, you know, your homemade dough rather than, rather than uh, commercial. Again, pinch. Mm. 
there we go. So, okay, now that we've um, done this, this is the classic crescent shaped um, dumpling that you, that you would roll, uh, fold. But, you know, the truth is, uh, in most family, they don't even, uh, in the northern family, they don't even make such a beautiful dumpling. <laughs> uh, you could just do a very simple uh, fold, which is a, which this is actually a classic, um, a classic uh, pot sticker uh, uh, fold. You just uh, fold the top and then just fold the end and make it a long, thin shape. And this is, this is a classic pot sticker shape. So you don't even have to create that pleat. Okay? Now, and for boiled dumpling, very often uh, in the family, they also won't, don't use the, the, you know, fancy pleat. You would just take this and use the two hands and, and just press it down and that creates a nice, you know, uh, almost crescent shape, but uh, can you do another one of those for us? They seem okay. very efficient. <laughs> okay. Okay. So basically you just use your, your um, uh, thumb and index finger and just squeeze the um, edges and make it into a nice round shape like that. So, you know, it's again, depending on what you want to do, it's, these are, these are all the different ways of folding um, dumplings. Now, I'm going to show you to the, um, using commercial wrapper now. If, when you're making the homemade dough, do you, do you typically make the wrapper as you fill it, or do you make all of them first? I would um, roll them as you fill it, because um, they dry up very quickly. So you don't want, <clears throat> you don't want to dry, grab this, the, the skin. All right, here is a regular, I mean a, a commercial dough. Um, again, you want to put, fill in some put some filling in, but because of the fact that the, um, the commercial dough is a little bit dry, I would moisten the edge, okay? And then do the same, the same method by pressing on one end and just, just keep folding it until it has this beautiful um, scud-like pleat. And the shape will automatically um, form because you are only folding one end of the, um, the wrapper and not this end. This end is just flat. And that's how you get to see this beautiful um, uh, pleat in front. I'll, let me do this again. You moisten the, uh, the wrapper around and you pinch one end and you start pleating it. And you just do it on one side of the, of the dough. And then really press it really hard to, to seal. There you go. Any questions about folding? Yeah, there's one question. How do you prevent it from ripping? Well, you know, it is experience, I guess, because if you, uh, if you roll the dough too thin um, and you put in too much filling, um, it can rip. Uh, so maybe control the amount of filling. I think that's, that, that can help. You know, if you, if you control the, the filling um, properly, then, then you can... You can uh, yeah, prevent it from, from ripping when you, when you fold it. Um, and also make sure that <clears throat> there is no, no opening or seam after, after you, 
you fold the dumpling because once you cook it, it's gonna the the moisture inside is gonna expand, and if you have any kind of rip, it's gonna just burst open. The whole the whole dumpling will burst open. So make sure you seal it tightly. Like I said, this one here um, with a with a commercial uh, wrapper, you wanna really press it hard and make sure it is sealed tightly on the edge. Okay. Yeah, and I noticed when you're doing that, I, w I had trouble making the log from what you, but then it looks like you're using more the palm of your hand. Is that right? Yes, yeah, you're using the, between the palm and the, and, the, and the middle of your hand. Yeah. You don't, you don't use the, the, the fingers. It's, and is, so. is this dough like kind of like cookie dough, like you could refrigerate it and use it later, or do you really want to use it right away? If you really want to save it, um, yes, you can, although um, you don't want to keep it for too long. Um, I would rec suggest that what you want to do is to um, finish the dumpling, make sure that the dumpling is completed before you store it. Now, um, you, can, you can freeze them uh, after you've made them. In fact, that is the best way to, uh, to um, uh, uh, maintain and store the dumpling, is to actually finish it and then freeze the dumpling. Now, the key to freezing the dumpling is you don't want to just put it in a bag. If you just put all this into a bag and you freeze it, they'll all stick together. <laughs> and then you're not going to be able to pull them apart when you uh, try to, uh, to cook it. So I would su uh, suggest that what you do is um, uh, put it on a tray, uh, uh, like, on a, like a baking sheet, and then put it in the freezer until it's uh, you know, relatively frozen, it doesn't have to be completely deep frozen, but uh, uh, then you put it in a bag. That way you can store it uh, already pre-frozen as opposed to trying to, um, uh, trying to uh, freeze them uh, while it's still you know, soft and pliable. Otherwise they will all get stuck and, and you, you, will, you will end up uh, having this, this clump of dumplings uh, that's you know, stuck together. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make some more of these because then, then we'll, uh, we'll be able to actually cook them, okay? So while I roll and, and fall, uh, ask questions. Yeah, we're wondering, what's a good, you know, some people say that there isn't a lot of beverages that go with Chinese food, um, you know, alcohol or cocktails or anything, what would you say to that? And, and what do you recommend? What's the best beverage for dumplings? Oh, I, I, I'd say beer is the best uh, beverage for Chinese food in general. And oh, I think it's great to have beer with some dumplings. It's just, especially, you know, if, if it's in the, in the winter and, 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 and you, uh, uh, you know, you have this nice uh, hot plate of Boil dumpling, and you can just wash it down with the with beer, and I think it's just perfect. And what is I, it about I, the beer? I, I wouldn't go and, and get a baijiu. <laughs> uh, although I, you know, I'm not a big fan of baijiu. I don't know. Do you like baijiu? <laughs> I I I do not. It tastes like um, I don't know what yeah. I imagine now. Pause from beer. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, so, you know, some people want a little bit more information on your rolling pin and like what the size is and we're getting specific here and where you, where you, what you prefer to use. Um, generally, if you go to Chinatown, you, this is about, I think about uh, a little under one inch diameter. And if you just go to Chinatown, um, you can actually buy uh, this in any restaurant supply store. Oh, actually, I'm, I wanted to show you how to roll the, the, um, with a, with a regular large rolling pin, okay? So I actually would just go ahead and roll it like so, like a regular, like a regular dough until it's, it's um, uh, flat and round. And then I would go around the edge and just roll a little bit at a time around the edge to, to uh, make it thinner. So the idea is you want, um, to have a thin outer edge with slightly thicker uh, interior. That's, that's how I would do if you don't have one of these Chinese rolling pin. Um, so first you roll, it, <clears throat> roll the whole this out into the, 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 the thickness that you desire for 
the middle of the of the dough, and then you just you know roll the edge. And, and you know, and Ken, in the supermarket, I know that a lot of us will find many different types of wrappers. There are square wrappers, there are circle ones, and then there are yellow ones. What, what do you think? What is one better for frying, and one better for uh, what's the difference? Well, <clears throat> actually, they're usually um, shaped for a specific application uh, type of dumplings. For example, um, the, ra the the square ones um, they're usually for for one ton, as opposed to you know this kind of um, uh, um, modern style dumpling. Uh, so, so, so it really is uh, what, what, whatever kind of dumplings that you are going to be making determines the, the shape of the, the wrapper. Um, for for the this northern style dumpling, definitely you want to use round. Now, the yellow ones basically the difference is that that one, that that wrapper is made with um, egg noodle dough. So in other words, there's egg in it, and and and, and usually it's the uh, Cantonese that would use uh, egg noodle uh, wrapper, which means that if you're making the Cantonese uh, dumpling, uh, then you use uh, the you know the yellow kind. Um, for northern style dumplings, I would always just recommend using the flour one, which is the white kind. Um, even even for the um, Shanghai style dumplings, I would use the, the white kind of uh, dough. And, and where did dumplings originate? I think a lot of part provinces claim it to be its its own. What do you think? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you know, the truth is, I have never really uh, looked into that. Because, uh, although I, I know noodles, um, they were there was a his, uh, archaeological site in central China that they were able to find um, the most uh, ancient noodles in a tomb. And it was a, a bowl of noodle that was flipped over. And they, uh, I guess the noodle got preserved because the bowl was flipped over. And so you can actually see, uh, uh, they, they found the bowl and they can actually see the noodles. In it. And the noodle itself is actually made from buckwheat flour as opposed to wheat flour. Now, as you know, wheat flour was not imported into China until the Silk Road because wheat actually originated in the Middle East. And, uh, and so, so really the, um, the, wheat, the wheat flour type of uh, the wrappers and noodles or dumplings and noodles <clears throat> didn't arrive into China until later. At least that's what I know. <laughs> I think the, the, the wrappers that we're making by scratch are about, I would say they're about what, two inches in diameter? They are about, I would say, three inches, two and a half to three inches. Um, I, I like that size because it makes a really nice, um, uh, uh, you know, dainty looking um, dumpling as opposed to these huge big dumplings that you uh, find in, in, in restaurants sometimes, which is commercially made. Um, and this is just, just perfect for, for a two by, uh, two by kind of a, um, size. So I, I like that. I like that, that, that this size as opposed to making it even bigger. Okay, so let me make a few more and then we'll, uh, we'll fry. Okay, all right, now cooking them. There are many different ways of cooking uh, these dumplings and uh, boiling is the most common in northern Chinese uh, dumpling. So uh, I, I am going to do that uh, today as well. But, uh, but here in, in the US, a lot of us actually like the fried ones. Now, the fried dumplings, uh, you know, we, sometimes it's called pot sticker. But pot sticker has a very specific technique and I would, uh, I'm going to show you the, 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 the actual technique on how to actually make pot sticker. Um, whereas in many restaurants, if you go, uh, to a, you know, one of these Chinese restaurants, sometimes they say they will serve pot sticker, but it really is fried dumpling, which means the dumpling has already been cooked at a boil or steam and then fried, whereas pot sticker is not pre-cooked. Pot sticker, you, uh, cook, uh, you use raw dumplings and actually cook it in the, in the frying pan directly. Now I'll show you how that's going to be done. Okay. Um, so yeah, so those are the, the two methods I'm going to show you is one, of course, is boiling, which is the most uh, common and typical um, 
way of making uh, dumplings, and in northern Chinese we call it jiaozi. Uh, whereas the um, the plastic guo uh, tie, you know, you you fry it in a in a frying pan. All right, let's see two more, and then we'll uh, we'll cook. And then you have all kinds of other uh, ones that look like they're more translucent. The peel is that rice flour, and or the green jade ones. Is that also the spinach? Yeah. Well, depending on what they are, uh, there are two kinds of um, um, dough. With that one is um, a glutinous rice dough, which is also sort of translucent, but but slightly sticky. It has a a, a slightly stickier uh, consistency, um, but there's other kind which is translucent but not sticky, and that actually is made from wheat starch, meaning it's the it's the starch that 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 is uh, from uh, from the flour milling itself, and that starch, uh, wheat starch, actually is an excellent um, dumpling wrapper for for uh, you know steaming uh, and not frying, but uh, the, the sticky rice version is excellent for frying. All right, I'm going to, uh, I have a baking sheet here. I'm going to put these that I'm going to boil. Okay. These are the, the boil kind. And then the rest, I'm actually going to fry them and make them into a pot sticker. Now, okay. before we put this in a frying pan, I'm going to just clean up this counter. And we have a good question for you while we clean up the counter. And I kind of asked you before we started. But I can never okay. portion the filling right with uh, the number of wrappers. I always have extra filling left. So what do you recommend we do with the leftover filling? Oh, um, you know, you can just fry it and then make it into this meat sauce. It will be perfect to uh, go on top of rice. That's, you stir fry the, the meat, the filling, um, very quickly until it's all cooked. Um, and and you know put it over there like a sauce. Put it over over steam rice. It's an excellent uh, topping for for like a quick lunch or something. But I've got I've got my uh, uh, trusty convection uh, induction stove here, and this is it's just, it is already um, on. Because I wanted to heat up a little bit the uh, front. No. Can people see this? Is this is that center? Looks good. Is that good? Okay. okay. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of oil. I've already. You can actually start with uh, with cold pan as well. It doesn't have to be. Uh, but I I just wanted to preheat just now because um, otherwise it will take forever. So now it's a little bit hot, and I'm going to just arrange the um, the pot sticker. Okay. So I'm actually. Was that? Was that just to cover a full layer on the on the on the bottom? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you have enough, you can just fill the whole uh, pan. But I just, I, I just made enough to to uh, uh, show this. Um, and what kind of oil? Vegetable, canola, olive oil. I would use vegetable oil, uh, which really is um, soybean oil. Um, and uh, canola oil is fine. Uh, I mean, corn oil is fine, but some people now find that to be not very healthy. So you know, depending on depending on your, your concern about uh, healthiness. Um, but, you know, I also like to use avocado oil. Uh, avocado oil is great because um, uh, the smoking temperature is high and it, it, it's flavorless, which is perfect for, you know, making Chinese food because you want the other 
the other uh, flavoring agent, the sauces, to come through. Um, so, at, so, in, so basically, initially, you want to make sure that there's a little crust at the bottom, but not burned, right? And not completely fried. And so, at this point, you are going to pour some water because this is when you actually steam. and then cover so by covering the, the frying pan you're steaming the the um the dumpling so that's what you're doing you're steam, you're browning at a, a little bit at the bottom and then you're steaming it so you're going to steam this for about um you know like three four minutes until the water is sort of slightly evaporated and we're going to do this twice um you know a lot of people actually in china say you do it three times but i find that twice is pretty good it, it's already cooked through um, but again, you know, it's up to you. If you if you want to make sure that everything is cooked completely through, maybe you can do it three times. Just just pour about I would say half a cup of water, and pour it. Bring the heat up a little. I guess depending on how you know, it's going to be different if if maybe more water for a bigger pan. Like you know how your your uh, you know my mom always taught me to do a fingernail of water above the rice. Is do yeah. you want the water to go up halfway in the dumpling or about about what's oh, the eyeball? Oh. Halfway is too much. Um, I would say that just, just a, uh, maybe, you know, oh, maybe about uh, one quarter inch um, deep. Um, but, you know, a little, just enough to, uh, uh, to create steam. As you see, then the steam is coming up, and this is what we want, is to have the steam uh, coming through. Uh, and we'll steam it for a few minutes, and we'll open it up. And put a little bit more extra water. Can we um, can we put the dumplings touching? Because sometimes we see images of a, a full pan. But you you did very few in there. Is that because you just didn't have enough, or? Um, I yes. I mean, if if I had enough time, I would make some more. Uh, I would fill the whole pan, uh, you know, with um, uh, the dumplings. Um, in, next to each other and create this beautiful pattern. Uh, but I'm just going to cook whatever I've made just now. Uh, but yes, that's what we would do. And also, uh, lately, in many of the restaurants, you, you get to see this lacy, um, crunchy bottom, right? Uh, now, the only difference is that with the lacy, crunchy bottom, what you do is you uh, pour a little bit of um, mix, uh, flour water mixture almost like a batter, just pour a little bit of that batter and, and, and spread it around uh, with the water. And, uh, and, and, and as you steam it, it, it and, and fry it, it creates this, this um, lacy looking uh, crust at the bottom. And when you flip it over on a plate, it just all ha has this beautiful shape. So that's, that's the only difference. But otherwise, um, the, Wait, when, the dumplings- when do, you, are, when do you put that in? When do you put the flour and water in? And about how much is it? One, um, like a couple of tablespoons with uh, equal parts. Yeah, of and, I, and I would I would put it at the end uh, when all this all the steaming is already done. Um, so you would just want to finish it at the end. So you pour uh, a little bit of that and let it steam, and that's it. That's basically how uh, you know they create that crust at the bottom. But you know, it's not as easy as you see, so you have to experiment a little bit with that. Um, I, when I start, uh, try to do that, I have to experiment a few times before I think it comes out properly. Uh, but, but yes, that's what, that's how you do it. You create this, uh, you pour in, I would say, make a very thin batter. Uh, I would say maybe like, uh, you know, a quarter cup of, maybe even less, a quarter cup of water with maybe one tablespoon of flour, just mix it um, uh, to create this, this um, thin batter. So I'm going to um, add some, because it sounds like it's beginning to dry up. So I'm just going to, I'll actually fill the still water there. So let it steam some more. Um, as, as it dries up, I, I'm going to put a lot, another portion of water in there. Now, I also would, uh, would um, uh, recommend that you use a non-stick frying pan if you have one. Uh, I'm using a, uh, an old, uh, already beautifully seasoned cast iron and, and it won't stick to uh, this. But, but if you want to use non-stick, go ahead and use it because uh, don't, don't try to do this on a, um, 
Stanley was still frying and because Stanley will stick to the bottom, the, the, the dough will just completely stick to the pot pan itself. Um, unless you put a lot of oil. <laughs> but, you know, this one, I, I've, I have this cast iron pan uh, that's been around for a long time. And so it really is a, uh, a good, trusty, um, non-stick frying pan. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour a little extra water. Any specific questions about this? Uh, yep, how would you reheat um, the leftovers and also on the meat leftovers, can you put that in like, uh, if you're gonna make balls or some other type of flour based thing? Well, if, you freeze, if you freeze your dumplings uncooked, um, you can just cook it from frozen because they're all individual uh, dumplings small and they can, and if you want to boil, just drop into the water. If you're going, if you want to fry, um, just go ahead and, you know, put a layer of oil on, on, at the bottom of the pan and just arrange the dumplings around and just go ahead and, 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 and do what I'm doing here by, you know, slightly browning the bottom and then put water and finally let it completely dry uh, to, um, uh, to brown properly. And, and just so, in the interest of time, uh, Kian, can you tell us the boiling mechanism? Do you put them in after they've boiled? Um, just give yes, us a little so overview of that. You put it um, you put it into the pot that's, that uh, is a boiling water and, and, um, and just keep boiling it and put, uh, and then you put a little bit of cold water at a time. Okay, you, you start with the boiling water, you put your dumpling in and let it come up to a boil and then you put about a cup of um, uh, cold water, it will stop the boiling and then it brings up to uh, boiling again. You put another half a cup of water, let it come back to a boil twice. So you do it twice, and then that should be done. So that's, that's how I would do it. Again, some people do it three times. I, I just do it twice. I think that should be uh, plenty. Okay, and um, here, I think I'm ready to just let it, let it open up. So this will, this will actually, uh, Dry up the liquid and then create a nice brown bottom. And some people, if you're cooking with pork, are always nervous that it's not fully cooked. Um, do you feel uh, uh, confident that after putting uh, the cold water in twice and then steaming these twice that they'll be fully cooked? I, I, I'm, you know, I've done it just twice for many, many uh, years and it's been cooked through. So I'm pretty confident that that should be fine. But if you feel like you want to cook more, do it three times, it's fine. Uh, it will be fine as well. Um, as you can see now, the water pretty much is, is almost evaporated. And a very important question that's come up at least 10 times. Tell us your favorite dipping sauce. Ah. My favorite dipping sauce would be just ginger and, and black vinegar. So I would slice up thin, uh, um, uh, in a julienne, very thin uh, ginger, um, and then pour some uh, black vinegar, the Xinjiang, Xinjiang black vinegar, and that's it. Um, And then you're talking about freezing the dumplings. So once we've made all the dumplings, we can put them in the freezer. Um, can we actually cook the dumplings um, after, actually, how, how long do you actually, how long does that actually take to get from there? It looks like it was like 10 minutes, right? Okay, so, so here is the, um, the pot sticker. Well, if I have time, I would um, very carefully um, flip this over. <laughs> so, so that's, this is what I would uh, uh, serve with um, uh, 
black vinegar and 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 very thinly julienne ginger. Or in the in the northern Chinese way, they use um, chopped up garlic and black vinegar. That's the other that's the other way. Now um, some people also would add chili uh, oil into it, which is also delicious. Um, I rarely would put soy sauce in the in the dipping sauce. And the dipping sauce really usually is black vinegar. Um, and so yeah, so that's um, so that's the um, pot sticker. Now. I think we run out of time, haven't we? Nancy, you there? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, we are right there, and we want to be uh, sensitive that everyone's trying to get dinner uh, on the table for your families, and you probably need to do some cleanup too. Um, but Chef Kian, you are such a gift to us. Thank you so much for telling us your secrets, um, and thank you so much for taking us from start to finish. I have mine right here, my dumplings. I have a pot going. I, I made about 20 while you were teaching us. And oh, good. thank you so much. And for everyone who's on the call, uh, please uh, let us know. If, we, if you have your name, we're going to resend out uh, three things. One, the recipes. Two, Kian's amazing books, A Phoenix Clause, which you can buy via uh, the Mocha uh, site. And the Pearl River Mart is our Mocha shop. Um, so we really ask you to support your chefs and support your restaurants and order from them. And I think many of you know that Chinatown has suffered quite a bit in the last several months. So we welcome your um, support of the Chinatown community, uh, the restaurants. Many of them are still doing takeout. Please go out and support them. Um, and Chef Kian, we are so anxious for your next session with us. So thank you so much. Any final suggestions so we don't make sure we don't do anything wrong in the kitchen? No, just go out and be creative with your filling. I mean, you know, it's, there is no one, uh, you know, uh, correct filling or not. You just, uh, like I said, you just create your, your own, but they just uh, follow the, the, the main um, combination, which is a little bit of aromatics and, and seasoning salt and pepper and uh, half protein and half vegetable, and that's it. That's so, uh, have fun, enjoy making dumplings. <laughs>